So, Castro, as you can see, is the older of the two fighters by three years and the more experienced in professional terms. But Slater has that nine-fight amateur pedigree behind him. Both men won their last contest by first-round KO. So there is every chance that this one won't go the distance. Now, all I've got to do is hand you to our MC, Buddy Johnson, to introduce our combatants for what could be an explosive catch-rate contest. Bama 35, brought to you by RDX Sports, Giant Inside, and FM 104, Dublin's hit music station. Now presenting three five-minute rounds in this catchweight contest at 72 kilograms or 158 pounds. Now introducing first in the blue corner, he weighed in officially at 155.1 pounds. He has a professional record of two wins and three defeats. Representing Team Rhino and PCA from Navan, Brazil. Make some noise for Janderson, the Jungle Castro. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in officially at 158.1 pounds. Making his debut as a professional, he represents S. BG Island from County Clare, but fighting out of Dublin, Ireland. Make some noise for Sam Slater. When the action begins, your referee in charge is Mr. Declan Larkin. Chris, body language said everything there. Jean Dusson, so loose, so Brazilian. Sam Slater like a tiger, keeping his eyes on him, so focused. Yeah, I love the intensity in this matchup, and there's a lot on the line as well for Slater to come in and take a guy on who has five fights experience, but Slater confident in all areas, very well-rounded. I think Johnson is going to keep this one on the feet. Should be a barn burner. Well, as we said, Chris, vast amateur experience for Sam. Sam, seven wins from nine contests, so he's, he's really well-schooled. And especially when you consider that IMAP experience, it's such a proving ground. 2017, 2015, national team member for the Republic of Ireland. He's holding his own right now, but I don't think he wants to be a stationary target because Johnderson, he's got pro K1 experience, a Muay Thai pedigree, real flashy technique. I'm glad you said that, Chris. We, we could see that, and the thing is, again, how many times have you and I talked about striking and kicking for the cage? And do you notice Johnderson snapping it back so he doesn't get caught? I know they're in the clinch up now, but you can already see the way he's adapted that skill set the MMA game. And this is the first big question. This is the, the test, if you will. Can he defeat Slater in the clinch or at least work his way out because he's got great knees and short elbows? Muay Thai does offer a solid grappling base. You can see him actually tying those elbows and actually really controlling and maintaining his position against the fence. He'll try to turn away and then strike on the exit. But Slater's keeping him here and he's got those deep underhooks. He can get a takedown. That, that's the thing with Johnson here, as you rightly said. You see the balance there. That's from those Muay Thai clinches regularly in his career here. And again, he turns beautifully, and his movement is so good in the clinch, and as expected, in come the knees. Yeah, Slater tried to get a duck under there, and Johnson wasn't having any of it. The tie-up, a couple of short elbows, and now he's the aggressor here. But I think he's going to want to you know, try to push his arms in and get out. I don't see him being so interested in maintaining the tie-up, but I, maybe not. I agree totally, Chris. And again, the reason I agree with you is because in the opening exchanges, he was so loose and so good at range. You can see him forcing with the frame, trying to get out, but the commitment and the reshot from Sam Slater here was the right ingredient. Well, again, I think having seen that early exchanges, this is the right thing for Sam Slater to do, is to test his man. And again, he'll also know that Janderson is suspect in that opening round, he either wins or he loses. So I think Sam will really look to put the pressure on here. I felt that Castor needed to make this a messy fight and really get after Slater early, dictate the pace, keep things on his terms. On his back, in the middle of the ring where he can't use the cage to stand up, would probably be the least favorable position for him in this fight. Now he has got, well, I was just about to say, he tied the legs up there of Slater and, and he got up well there, Chris. Oh yeah, great tie up. Overhook there, catching that half butterfly sweep, but the commitment and the tightness from Slater, bending him backwards, the head pressure. 
He's so good at figuring you out. That's one of the things that I even heard from one of his former opponents here tonight. He said, look, Slater is one of those guys that if you do hit the third round, he's gonna win it every time because he's just such a learner in the ring. And to me, now, you know, over three minutes into this fight, he's doing the right things more frequently than he did in the earlier part of this first round. And that's staying tight, jockeying for position, keeping Castro off balance, and getting him tired here. Big punches from Slater. Yeah, this is bad positioning there uh, for Castro, and he had no choice there but to be caught in this position. And as you rightly said from those opening moments, this is now dangerous for him, Chris. That downward elbow, the first, I think, of many coming, giving up his back. Yeah, he's forced the back here. He had full mount, both hooks in. Slater's got an excellent submission game. This is probably the most advantageous place he could be in this fight. Early, relatively early, so he should have good grips. Both fighters not too sweaty yet. He's gonna work those hooks in, flatten them out, and punch his way into possibly opening up a choke. Just under 60 seconds. Yeah, he's, he's still got time, and as you said, textbook way to try and open Jean up. And as we said before, he knows, here we go, Chris, we knew, he knew he's vulnerable in the first round, and he's very vulnerable now. He's working for that figure four. Jonathan trying to tie up and go two on one here, but that arm is almost underneath the chin. It doesn't have to be completely under to get the choke. This is deep mouth. He's got time to work here, but he's got to get the grip correct. He may swap palm to palm. Yes, very hard times here at the moment for Castro. Jonathan, he really is deep in the jungle here now, Chris. Oh, that was really tight, but able to big brother and bully his way out as Castro is going to have to pay attention to the triangle here with one arm in. Much better. Good posture, throwing the legs to the side. Castro looking for the ground and pound. Well, you heard the last 10 seconds called there, and Castro got out of jail there superbly. As in previous times, he managed to get upright to his feet, but as, as again, right on the bell there, Slater gets full man. Well, it was a thrilling round of back and forth action there. Castro and Slater really going after each other. Let's take a look at some of what transpired. Look at that trip, just so technical. Slater's so aware and just so switched on. And you see that from the SPG guys. They have a feeling, almost a sixth sense in the clinch, exposing the back, not quite able to get that choke. But Chris, I was gonna say, fair credit to Castro. He was in a lot of trouble here, but you liked the escape, didn't you? Absolutely. He was able to make sure he didn't quite allow that full figure four grip, which was what the method of choking Slater was looking for was patient, he obviously knew from his corner there wasn't a ton of time on the clock, able to ride out that end of the round, but a bit of a scare. Now, three takedowns, the submission attempt after that good start early from Jonderson, you've got to say Slam, Sam probably took control of that round. I think so, and although Jonderson had a good early sort of 30, 40 seconds, he wasn't able to dominate the clinch the way he would have liked to, although despite reversing the position, able to get a couple of advantageous places. Close round, but I think Slater just edged it. And for me, Jonathan Castro just looks slightly more tired of the two at the beginning of this second round, waiting for it to start. And you can see how light on his feet Sam Slater is at the moment. Beautiful kicks there from Slater. Good coverage. A lot more energy here from Slater. Spinning back elbow into the level change, head inside. Getting that pickup, high crotch single. Castro's gonna go for a choke, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. For me, very slick right from the start from Slater. I like the way he started the second exactly the way he finished the first. That momentum that he's carrying forward from the opening round. And a bit more energy. I mean, maybe Castro is tired, but I think the other thing that Slater did was he played around with his rhythm. He came out with a much more high output and pace and more forward pressure than in the first round, which was smart because he knew that Castro was going to try to kickbox him and catch him. And what I also like, Chris, is when we saw him go to ground, we see that he's capable of the submissions, but I like the way he's always looking to set them up, take the arm, the little elbows, dropping punches in. He's a real setup guy before he goes for those submissions. He's controlling the whole time. There's nothing wasted here. And he's not giving Castro anything for free in these positions and these exchanges. And so when you make a guy work like this and you punish him every single time, it opens up submissions, it opens up opportunities just like this. And that's the difference between this and round one, Chris. If you think about round one from this position, Castro got back to his feet three times. He's been taken down and kept there right from the start of this second. And you've got three and a half minutes to work if you're Slater while on a guy's back like this. Castro's trying to turn into him, oh, he gave up his neck. This is bad, Malcolm, this is really bad. That arm is gonna get underneath the chin here. He's got the grip behind the shoulder. 
He's got to be very careful. This looks really deep. I think this is going to be it. I think you're right, Chris. Oh, he gave it up. He gave it up. Wow. That was crafty. But Slater, I think, was wise because he realized he might lose the position if he didn't maintain control. And you're much better off going back to mount, back to mount, punching. This is MMA, not pure submission grappling. Now, this is the thing as well for Castro. Every time he tries to change position, the elbow's dropped, and he's forced to his back, give up his back once again. You talked about the way Slater's thinking through this. The way he transitions, the elbow dropped twice, and now he's got the back again. What a frenetic pace. Punching the whole time, good wrist ride with the left arm there. So much control, and then he'll go right to that choke. That was a big mistake. That looks really tight. Again, he's going to go palm to palm. This is smart grip. That's the tap. Chris Hoogstra calls it again. And Chris, the difference between round one and two this time was the total control when he hit the ground from Sam Slater. Put him down, took the back, and never let him off the hook. Sam Slater making his pro debut in Dublin. No better way to do it, Malcolm Martin. Oh, superb, Chris. And as you said, look here, when he gets the back, he gets it in tight. Now, to be fair, his positioning, Castro helped him, didn't he? And swapping up the choking arm as well. Castro was worried about that, that control from the opposite side. He actually turned in the other way, and Slater actually snuck his arm underneath the chin the opposite way, going with that different grip. That was the difference as well, because I think Castro was expecting the full figure four, which he kind of fought a few times. Different grip. Different choking arm, Sam Slater getting it done the right way tonight. Oh, Chris, big, big Bama debut for this young man, but we knew he had the pedigree from the amateur record, seven and two. We knew he was on the right track, and it's really paid off for him in a big way tonight. And it's all smiles in the SVG corner there. John Cavan are just about as happy as they can be, and why not? You're facing a dangerous, very technical striker, and a guy who has five fights. You know, this is not Castro's first rodeo, and for Slater to go out there and face a couple of really tricky things in the first round, figure it out, going with more commitment in the second, beautiful. Yes, big future from this young man, and Buddy Johnson's gonna make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout ended at two minutes and 36 seconds into the second round. Your winner by submission with a rear naked choke in the red corner, Sam Slater.